OK. All right. So nice to see you again today. And I hope today's line will not be cut off later on. Right. OK. OK. So we will continue to uh, where we stopped uh, previously. In last sessions, we are discussing about the heat transfer related applications. And we know that heat transfer applications can be easily implemented in the uh, finite element uh, software, okay, finite element software, because of the fundamentals uh, equations which resemble the, the similar partial derivative, uh, that partial differential equations that we have used for other applications such as uh, structural analysis, as well as we can see flows, electrical potential, and acoustic, right? So the only difference is that uh, instead of using the Young modulus, we, we use different parameter to denote the characteristics of that particular applications, right? So in this set, uh, in this sessions, okay, our intention is to concentrate on the heat transfer applications, right? So heat transfer applications has been one of the um, important applications in the finite element analysis because uh, as we know to characterize and to understand the how heat is being transferred okay, in a certain structure, okay? Sometimes it's very uh, important, okay? So what we would see here is it, it started with uh, the simple or the fundamentals one dimensional heat conductions okay as we know one dimensional heat conductions as you can see okay just assuming this is one dimensional okay only one directions x directions okay so the total energy okay it can be described by the conservation of energy the total energy in okay plus whatever generated in the element itself okay should be equals to the total energy stored plus the energy out from the system okay in the along the x axis okay along this one dimensional uh, directions right okay so as we know uh because of this particular equations, all right, so we have several parameters that we need to uh, estimate, okay? For example, the Qx, okay, which is the heat conducted into the volume, okay, through this particular surface or this particular point, okay? And then also we need to estimate what are, what are the heat conducted, okay? What is the heat conducted out from the other side of the surface? Okay. Then also we have to know what are the energies being stored right in the element right or in this control volume. Okay. So fundamentally, uh, in the heat transfer analysis or maybe in the thermo thermodynamics uh, applications, we know that we can have, uh, we can estimate this particular area right. We can form our control volume okay and this control volume is now when being uh, implemented in the final element analysis or final element methods this control volume is the volume of the element itself okay so we will see how the heat is being transferred into one particular element okay so this would it, this can be a, a one dimensional uh, type of element, two-dimensional type of element, as well as a three-dimensional uh, type of elements, right? So here, uh, for our derivations, we start with uh, not considering any convections, okay? Our main heat uh, transfer applications would be through a conduction, okay? Most of the heat will be uh, being transferred and being uh, lost in in the conduction way, okay? Whereas convections may come into the picture when uh, there is uh, interactions between the boundary, okay? With the 
surrounding, right? So we would not put this, okay? That would be come as one of the boundary conditions later on, right? So for our main purpose, okay, when we do our meshing, okay, our elements will be meshed across the solid part of our model, right? So through the Fourier's law of heat conductions, okay, we can estimate that the, the Qx, okay, or the heat flux into the surface along the x directions, okay, would be equals to minus k xx means in along the x directions, okay, dt over dx, right, where the k itself is the thermal conductivity, right, in the x directions, okay. So here we specifically say uh, in the x directions because uh, we would want to derive our, our equation such that it is applicable for as general as it is, okay, that can be applicable or extend to two-dimensional or three-dimensional applications later on, right? So as we would expect, okay, we do an assumption such that if it is a uh, metal usually, all right, so the heat would conduct uh, equally good, okay, across uh, three-dimensional directions, okay, in the X or maybe Y as well as Z directions, okay? But then if you are applying it okay, to a type of material where where it is non-homogeneous okay is uh, maybe uh, any isotropic type of uh, material okay therefore uh, the heat transfer coefficients or the thermal conductivity of the materials will differ according to directions okay maybe you are lying a, a fibers okay which uh, will conduct in one direction, but not the other directions, all right? So the thermal conductivity will change according to the direction in that particular case, right? For the heat transfer, okay, out from the surface, okay, which we denote as Qx plus dx, okay, which is after a, a distant dx, okay? Therefore, we can uh, use a Taylor series expansions as we know we can expand this okay uh, based on the taylor series okay we have this uh, series okay where we usually take only the first two terms okay first term and second term so based on these two terms therefore when we take it in okay so we would maintain the kxx dt over dx okay plus we have to differentiate it respect to x, okay? So therefore, we d over dx, okay? The, the whole term, then dt, all right? So we take the, the first two terms, okay? To denote the, the q or the heat flux out from the surface, okay? Then next is the change in the stored energy, which we also want to estimate, okay? For our calculations from the uh, final elements uh, analysis itself okay so here we can uh, use the common uh, equations or the physics okay which we denote as uh, c m d t okay as you know the changes or the energy store in uh, volume can be can be uh, identified by the m c delta t right so this is basically mc delta t okay where the c is a specific heat the m is now referring to the the volume multiplied by the density okay so area multiplied by dx give us volume multiplied by density okay they give us the mass of the of the this particular control volume or maybe in this case is the final element right and the change in temperature okay the dt between this surface and the other surface okay so once we we get this one then we would able to estimate what are the energy okay what is the energy being stored okay changes in the energy being stored in the in the particular finite element okay so now uh, once we have uh, get all those uh, informations now we start to put it in okay into our uh, previous equation the conservations of energy equations okay where we have uh, this particular one dimensional heat transfer equations okay if you have two dimensional or three dimensional it's the same okay you just have to derive and put it in right so therefore you would have something similar okay if it is a 
two dimensional, then you have to involve the partial derivations of uh, of the KYY, let's say, okay, respect to Y, okay, respect to Y, okay. So you may have to differentiate uh, respect to different directions, okay. Then also you can expand it to a, a, a three dimensional heat transfer or heat conduction equations, right? Okay, so this would be the energy in and out okay this is the energy being generated okay into the system okay so you may uh, put in uh, heating okay or maybe you are putting in uh, cooling right so this represent the the energy in and out okay and this is the terms that represent the energy being stored right being stored in the in the system okay so if we take these equations uh, further on, right? So for a constant state, okay, or steady state application, so you will have a uh, temperature increase and it become a steady state later on, right? So at the steady state, what happens is that there will be no changes in terms of the energy stored anymore, right? Because it's already steady, so in and out should be now uh, no much changes so what has been stored will be uh, stored in that way right whatever you put in will be out immediately right so in that case the steady state will have this parameter okay where this energy stored term would be equals to zero as you can see also dt over dt okay respect to time okay during a steady state uh, during a steady state uh, cases, okay, so you may have a temperature profile, right? So this is the time, okay, and this is the temperature, right? So you may reach a steady state just like a control, right? So, okay, so at the steady state, after the steady state, okay, the changes of temperature respect to time is zero, right? So no matter how much time you increase, the temperature will remain similar, okay? or no changes okay zero therefore this term becomes zero right so once we know this term as well if we are considering a constant thermal conductivity okay what it means by term constant thermal conductivity is that the thermal conductivity would not change according to the directions or maybe according to temperature right so if that is the case therefore again this terms is a constant okay which we can bring it out right so that it become this simplified equations okay to represent a one-dimensional heat conductions okay for a steady state and constant thermal conductivity right okay so next after we come to the we have derived the heat conduction equations therefore we come to a stage where we would want to add in the boundary conditions okay so generally there are several boundary conditions that you may have to consider okay so the first one would be the constant surface temperature okay or we call it as a Dirichlet uh, boundary conditions okay so if this uh, let's say a surface okay? let's say you have a surface okay, which is connected to certain temperature right so this temperature may be equals to uh, 50 degree right or 50 kelvin right so therefore we have we'll set this boundary conditions all the nodes at this boundary conditions would be equals to the tb right so this tb right so this is one way of setting them a constant surface temperature okay the next would be the constant surface heat flux right Besides temperature, we can also assign a heat flux, meaning to say at the particular surface, heat being inserted, okay, is a constant, okay, in, in the form of heat flux, okay, we call it as a surface heat flux, right, because we are connecting it to a surface, okay. Then the other, uh, we will call this as a Newman uh, boundary conditions, right. On the other hand, we may also use this uh, Newman boundary conditions, okay, to apply it for what we call 
adiabatic or insulated surface. Okay, what it means is that since this heat flux represents the heat uh, in okay in the rate of heat okay being transferred into a surface. Okay, therefore for a, for an adiabatic adiabatic uh, surface or insulated surface, we would say that the heat flux is now equals to zero, meaning to say it's a constant, okay? It's a constant zero inside, okay? No no heat is being transferred in and out through the surface, okay? We can also put this kind of boundary conditions, right? This is the uh, equations to denote for the Newman boundary conditions. Depends on whether it's zero or certain uh, rate of change okay that you would have to apply in okay then the next one would be the convection surface conditions okay convections referring to maybe a, a type of cooling okay so you may have a um, solid okay which is heated okay but then there is an air okay coming in and out right so there will be a uh, we call this as a Robin boundary conditions, okay, where we assume that all, every single node is now subjected to a kind of uh, heat loss, right? Or yeah, okay, that heat loss can be estimated by uh, the Newton law of cooling, okay, which is equals Q equals to H, I think, yeah, okay, H uh, multiplied by T minus T infinity, okay. Since this T infinity referring to the room temperature, okay, which is referring to a temperature which is far away from the surface, okay. So we have this Newton's law of uh, cooling, okay. Another type of uh, uh, heat loss, okay, that may apply is the Stephen Boltzmann law of radiations, okay. So this uh, Boundary conditions may not be critical, okay, for normal applications. But then these boundary conditions would be very important, okay, when we involve a uh, uh, quite high temperature, okay. So when the surface or the material is being heated, okay, until a stage where it may start to glow, okay, especially when you try to melt it or whatever it is okay then you will see that the law of uh, radiations now should be applied okay and will become one of the important type of uh, heat loss okay so we can estimate it by the Stephen Boltzmann uh, constant multiplied by the emissivity of the material okay multiplied by this okay again the T uh, infinity is the ambient temperature or the room temperature okay so this is how you can implement them right according to different situations that you would want to consider right so if you want to refer to all these uh, boundary conditions okay so I would suggest that uh, you may try to look into this book okay in Corpora uh, principle of heat and mass transfer right Next would is just a, a table, okay, which you may have seen it previously, okay. We have to set the unit for the heat transfer to be consistent, right? So if we put in in the form of uh, normally in the finite element, everything is in the form of uh, Kelvin, right? usually is in the form of Kelvin, okay? But if you, your software allows you to define what is your, uh, I would say, starting temperature, okay? Then you may able to define the temperature in terms of uh, degree Celsius, okay? Which you relate it with the Kelvin, which is uh, 273.15 Kelvin, okay? It goes to, to zero degree Celsius, right? So you may define uh, your starting temperature, okay? Or you may also want to do it in the Fahrenheit, but uh, that is when you apply all your other con uh, constants or parameters in the Fahrenheit form, okay? So this is how you can set them up, okay? According to the SI unit.
Okay. Next would be the thermal conductivity. So in general, we have a typical thermal conductivity which you can obtain it online or from the appendix of the book. Okay, so you can just flip to maybe heat transfer book or thermodynamics book. Okay, you just flip in at the back, you may see uh, the thermal conductivities list. Okay, which are the common uh, thermal conductivity okay, for the uh, materials that you have or you want to define. Right, so in general, you may use one particular constant to define the the thermal conductivity right but then in certain case okay in certain case you may also want to define the thermal conductivity which you represented let's say from this uh, paper okay in this paper itself the thermal conductivity the specific heat s okay so these two may change very much according to the temperature right so certain metals okay you may need to consider it in this way all right in the in this what we call thermal dependence thermal property or thermal conductivity and specific heat all right so when you should consider this and not a single value is that when your applications or your final element uh, analysis is a kind of transient analysis as well as when you're considering heating up or cooling it down from a very high temperature, okay? Involving very high temperature. If you are only dealing with, let's say, a thermal conductivity in the room temperature or maybe until maybe 100 degrees Celsius, okay? Then the changes may not be that significant, okay? But then if you are considering it for uh, melting process or maybe other type of uh, process okay then you may have to consider the temperature dependent property okay so this is because for example this is a titanium alloys okay ti ti64 okay where you would see that the thermal conductivity will increase and then drop and then increase okay so this dropping is about uh, 900 degrees celsius to 1000 degrees celsius Okay, so you you can see that the behavior differ okay according to the temperature, right? So same thing for when you are considering it uh, in the high temperature, okay, the thermal conductivity of air as well, okay, will change, okay, uh, accordingly, right? So you can see that the specific heat now very much. Uh, change okay sorry the dense the density as well as the what i call the thermal conductivity okay it will start to go down because of the, the amount of air okay and the high temperature is very less okay for for it to be effective in conducting temperature okay or conducting heat sorry Next would be uh, typical values that you may consider. Okay, this is obtained from uh, the textbook uh, Logans, okay, by Professor Logans, and it is actually taken by the heat transfer book of uh, by Holman, right? So this represents the approximated value of convection uh, heat transfer coefficients, okay? Let's say for a uh, free conventions you may apply it from uh, 25 to 25 okay or maybe for a false convection if you are blowing it with uh, a fan then you may consider it from 100 to 500 okay depending on uh, suitability right then also uh, the boiling water okay and the other things right so it depends on uh, you are putting it in in the water or in the air right so it, the heat convection would change accordingly right so and this heat convections uh, coefficients will be very important okay for the applications of heat transfer analysis in the semiconductor 
right? Because you would want to predict, okay, how efficient it is for you to cool down a processor, okay? Because heat is very important, okay? Heat control is very important to make sure it is uh, not, it will not uh, disturb the operations of the CPU itself, okay? So by that case, uh, the convections uh, coefficients will be an important parameters for you to consider, right? So in some analysis, okay, so this is actually a, a laser cladding, or maybe I would say also a laser additive manufacturing of metal, okay, uh, appear or presented in in the paper by uh, Dr. George, okay, and Professor uh, Mee, Michael Lewis, right? So they have uh, investigate the temp how the temperature actually uh, change, okay, according to different uh, convection model, okay. So you may see that uh, if no convection, how it would, uh, how how is the temperature is being uh, simulated, okay, in the final element model, right? And then uh, if we are using different kind of a convection model, right? So how they would change, okay? So you can see that the temp temperature dependent uh, material property and so on would be important, okay? Because it is involving a high temperature, okay? In this uh, laser cladding, okay, we are, we are melting the, the metal and deposit it on the surface of the another plate or yeah, not the plate of metals, okay? So we call that as a laser cladding or cladding process, or it is very similar to what we call uh, 3D metal, uh, yeah, 3D metal adaptive manufacturing process, okay? Only different is that cladding referring to, we are adding a new surface on the existing surface, okay? So that's why they will put it for the whole surface. Right. Whereas in the three that uh 3D or metal adaptive manufacturing, you are building a, a shape or a structure, okay, instead of covering the whole surface. Right. So you can see that the the selections on con of convection uh, parameter would be important, okay, especially when we are dealing with the high temperature. Okay, so here is another uh applications okay where before we can apply to a finite element software okay for to a finite element software we also need to formulate the heat flux model okay so this heat flux model particularly important okay when we are dealing with like let's say laser melting okay so if we would want to investigate how the laser melting would affect or how the temperature being transferred from a laser to a surface, okay? Therefore, we would want to build a mathematical model to represent the laser, right? So one of the way would be, uh, first we measure the, the laser, okay? So this is a measurement of a laser okay, taken by, by the KIMM, all right? Courtesy of KIMM, the Korean Institute of Material and Mechanical and Materials, all right? So you can see that this laser profile have a, a quite uniform type of a flat top, I would say, okay? So it's a cylindrical type of a, a profile, okay? So some, some uh, laser, okay? Depending on the setting of the lenses, okay? They may have a, the characteristic of a Gaussian, okay? So depends on what kind of characteristic, therefore we will model it accordingly okay so that we would able to model the whole uh, process of the of the yeah laser process right so here since this is a, a so-called top hat uh, distribution heat flux okay therefore you can model it with a, again a top hat uh, model okay which is a mathematical model similar to this right and also we implement a uh, uh, penetration depth okay decreasing the penetration depth of heat flux okay according to the depth okay the laser will the heat flux being transferred into the the laser will, will decrease okay this is 
uh, consistent with others uh, founding in in the literatures okay by professor lingens and also uh, in this paper as is poor okay where because when the laser is melting into the the metal itself okay therefore this will become liquid and there is a a chain a chance that the the heat of the laser actually go into the the surface okay not only on the surface therefore we we implement this uh, a conical type of heat flux okay with a penetrating uh, laser okay and it is being represented by this uh, heat model right so once we have this heat model what we can do is uh, we have to input it into our finite element uh, analysis or finite element model, okay? So you have to do some coding, right? So you can, uh, based on the model, okay, you can type uh, the model in this. This is uh, the model, okay? Uh, an example of this kind of model, right? Heat flux model, which has been implemented in uh, a software called Abacus, right? So this code is actually in uh, Fortran, okay, Fortran language, okay, Fortran, right? So Fortran language, right? So the, the idea is very similar. So we have to detect if this kind of conditions apply, therefore we ha will have uh, the power term, the distribution term, okay, and other terms being applied according to this formula, right? So therefore, the finite element model or software can do the analysis according to what we input, right? Therefore, as I mentioned earlier in the in the course, okay, this course provide you a fundamentals on what can be done, okay, with the elements and so on, okay. But very important is that you, as a user or we as a user, should know, okay, what occurs and how we can change, okay to fit the model according to what we want, okay? So setting of boundary conditions, heat flux, and so on is very important, right? So again, this is another uh, applications, okay, of uh, once we get the heat source model, okay, once we get the heat flux model, okay, what we can do is we do a calibrations, all right? Because this model is still theoretical, right? Theoretically, um, in this way, Okay, but then we still need to do some kind of calibrations. Okay, meaning to say when we do calibrations, we will do an experiment. Okay, and then we do an analysis. Okay, using the finite element model, right? So once we do these two things, okay, this is a, a depositions of one one bit. Okay, on a titanium uh, six four uh, substrate, right? Using a titanium six four wire, right? So what we do, we uh, we do the experiment, and then we cut the cross sections. We measure it, all right? How it would looks like. We build the model. Okay. So once we build the model, then we we start to compare, right? So we build different model using different uh, efficiency. Okay. So in the model itself, okay. So in this model, right? So there is. DP, there is efficiency, right? Okay, the rest we can roughly uh, put it in, okay? But then DP, okay, which is the uh, penetration depth, we may not know how deep it is, okay? We cannot measure it, right? Therefore, we need to estimate or calibrate it through the experiment and the analysis, right? So you can see that uh, we try different uh, heat efficiency and the and, uh, penetration depth and we found that this would be the best for this process this process and so on okay so we may in the process of getting this uh parameter we have run more than hundreds okay maybe 150 or 160s uh, analysis okay to compare okay to match this profile before we can uh use it okay the next would be if you have questions feel free to put into the chat right so next would be uh, how we can implement it to estimate uh, trial, uh, thermal conductivity as well, okay? So as we know, uh, thermal conductivity for a solid, we can obtain it directly, right? But then for the purpose of getting 
the thermal conductivity for a powder okay because we have a metal powder and this process actually uh, is a three 3d printing okay using a technique we call it a powder bed fusion process okay so meaning to say we would put a metal powder on a layer okay and then we use laser or electron beam okay to melt it right therefore the melting okay which we uh, due to the heat flux by the laser or electron beam or the heat source itself okay this heat will be transferred through the powder and we would want to know what is the thermal conductivity between the powder okay because they are not connected okay they are only connected through the contact of the powder okay so in this model we estimate okay or we make an assumption that this is the model okay we make an assumption that this is the model okay and after it is uh, being heated okay then it will start to build uh, what we call a sintered okay so the two powder now will start to to melt and touch each other in this form okay so how the heat is actually being transferred through this okay according to the to the radius of this uh, sintered uh, neck okay so eventually after we do the analysis okay for different uh, neck and so on and justify okay therefore we can see that the simulated okay in this method okay the black color dot okay can obtain the heat transfer or the effective thermal conductivity for the powder okay for a range up to the melting okay so what happened is that at this stage the the powder is still connected at the very low portions okay the r okay but then after a certain temperature okay which is we estimate as a t equals to zero at the yeah the temperature at 0 0.4 of the melting temperature the sintering start to occur meaning to say this connected point will start to enlarge right so at this point we will start to enlarge it okay proportionally until it become a solid right so due to using this model we can interpolate and found that accordingly the r increase and it finally become a the whole solid okay so by doing this we found that actually it match well with the experiment done by the uh dr arche okay so for the powder right so in this way we can also use the final element uh, analysis to actually predict or estimate what is the thermal conductivity of the powder itself right so it depends on the creativity and how you apply the boundary conditions for your model okay to be simulated right then next uh you can see this application is to investigate the influence of the process parameter on the thermal stress okay so thermal stress represent the stress acting on the surface okay or in in within the 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 part itself okay due to the rapid heating and rapid cooling itself okay so there is a contraction and expansions okay and what's once it being cooled down it cannot be expand and so on so therefore it causes a thermal stress internally right so here we will build a three layer of uh, depositions okay three bit okay melting one time okay and deposit one layer of bit second layer of bit and third layer of bit and so on right so we will form three layers of bit okay with a different interval okay so by doing that okay we would can actually estimate what is the displacement and so on right and how this process parameter which involve the idle time okay in between the process okay so every single bit itself okay may take five seconds okay in between if we put two second gap okay before we deposit the second one third one and so on how it would affect the thermal stress okay so again this is a way of uh, doing an of applications of finite element okay in order to study okay how uh, we change the the process parameter will affect the the result of the uh, product 
then also we can use it for optimizing a process okay so this is how we can optimize a process okay again this is a laser a powder bed uh, powder bed process okay which involve a plasma electron beam all right so we will scan this is a powder layer okay deposit powder layer and then we will scan uh, the electron beam or the heat source okay across it okay so by doing that okay we can see how what is the melting range okay whether it penetrate through the layer or not okay so by doing that we can estimate okay to ensure that the melted region would always go across the depths okay we don't want to set it okay let's say this is the the speed okay of the laser beam okay 0 0.5 it will melt it into the, the the layer okay but when we increase it to 5.0 okay increase the speed then the heat transfer now is now on just on the on the layer okay but if we further increase the speed you can see that it's no longer uh, penetrate okay the melted region will not penetrate into the the layer okay so therefore it will cause the the so-called uh, um, process okay which is supposed to to stick the deposited layer with the the bottom layer okay will not occur at this place Okay, so from this we can also study the effect of the the process parameter okay how fast we should do the scanning of the laser or electron beam okay in order to to do this uh, particular process okay also uh, we have another way of optimization this is another optimization process okay through the what we call a multi-layer depositions of a three-dimensional object okay so usually if we we continuously uh, do the what we call uh, depositions okay of metal what happened is that uh, after some time okay there is uh, what we call a, a bit collapse okay meaning to say it's too hot that whatever you put in they will just uh, flow down right so it's getting flow down right so, in order to get this kind of a uh, good structure okay therefore you we have to in optimize what we call the interpass time remember the the time that we do either between one layer with the other right so we have successfully using uh final element uh, methods okay to analyze okay this is a simulation of 20 layer of depositions okay and we extract what is the the effect of the the melted regions okay and from there we estimate what is the optimum interpass time okay in between layers so that uh, it is not too hot and not too cold okay for the process to to proceed okay so you can see that uh, using the interpass time we can immediately increase the temperature at the uh, first few layer and then we maintain the temperature within the desired regions okay which is about 400 okay before we we deposit a new layer on it okay so this is the process of it okay so we have using this method okay of optimizations we have get the the proper interpass time okay in between the the depositions okay and this is how it looks like for the melted depths and also the length okay which is consistent okay so when the melted pole depth and length is consistent meaning to say the the quality of the deposited would be similar right so that would be the type of applications that you may able or i have explored it okay previous previously okay and you may also think of a way to explore it okay for a different kind of phenomena right so here is uh, the two type of uh, heat transfer analysis that you may want to do okay either it is steady state or the second one is the transient heat transfer okay so for a steady state type of heat transfer uh, it is much uh, simpler i would say for the computer to do okay but then uh, what the computer will do is they will slowly increase the what they call a step okay increase the temperature uh, the the time okay so that they they will know when the 
the the final element model is now the temperature will not change okay so when the temperature will no longer change much in the volume then they have reached what they call a steady state uh, conditions okay so they will do iterations okay first step okay time may be equals to 0 0.1 second okay what is the 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 heat profile okay the, the temperature profile then the next day you start to compare and so on okay until a stage then they say have been converged okay they found the solutions the solution have been in the steady state and they present that model for you right so for this type of uh, steady state heat transfer analysis the temperature at any given point would uh, remain constant okay after the equilibrium have been uh, obtained okay then the amount of heat entering any sections uh, usually uh, is a constant as well okay so meaning to say uh, you may have an object okay heat is being uh, applied to one particular point okay and that amount is usually the same okay then after some time it will reach a steady state okay therefore uh, we would we would uh, consider steady state heat transfer analysis okay so the FAA software will run a convergence test to make sure it is in the equilibrium conditions okay but then for certain cases okay if we would want to model uh, a process okay for example in the three-dimensional uh, printing or additive manufacturing process itself okay where the heat is now not constant okay it not started from this point okay the laser or the heat source will start from one point and keep moving through the time okay in this case uh, we would want to use a transient type of heat transfer analysis okay a steady state will not able to to simulate because the heat keep changing okay it will never reach a steady state uh, condition okay unless it stop and it stay there right so that would be the the cases and also in the certain case you may want to know how the temperature actually change okay if you are hitting it at one time okay how long it takes for the temperature to spread through the surface okay in that case also you may want to run a transient type of uh, heat transfer analysis right okay another type would be the changing volume right that would uh, hinder not only the heat source is moving okay also the the changing volume okay or maybe the temperature remember we have the temperature dependent uh, coefficient uh, conductivity okay once the temperature dependent conductivity change also we may have a temperature dependent convection change okay then all this will take into consideration that the whole system is not steady okay it keep changing the boundary condition may change okay the heat input may change okay the the volume may change right then in that case transient heat transfer analysis should be uh, performed okay so for a uh, for a transient type of an heat and heat transfer analysis we have to use uh, this simple guideline okay so this simple guideline is that uh, this delta t represent the time increment okay so if you are running a heat transfer analysis later on you will see that uh, the software will ask you to put in the heat heat increment or they may preset it for you maybe 0 0.1 second or one second right so this this time increment should be greater than the rho c over 6k delta l squared okay what it means is that remember this term del rho c k okay so this basically referring to the sort of energy store okay energy store in the in the in the object okay or the volume itself okay roughly is is in that way okay so because of the energy store okay if we make the time is uh, too small okay we put it as a 0 0.000001 second okay what happened is that this uh storage once you apply this heat okay it may take times to 
to for it to be spread throughout the the volume okay if you're hitting it this way okay it may take time for it to reach the other side okay and that time is the is the we can say a minimum time for it to conduct to through that one side right so what happened is if you are using a very small temperature okay during a transient heat transfer this temperature may only reach this point okay so what happened is that when it only reached this point during the calculations of your numerical uh, formulations they may start to because it doesn't reach the other side okay therefore the result will only take maybe uh, one one of the gauss point okay the rest will not be affected by this temperature okay and then after certain times okay then only it will reach the other side okay but then but then our element is only one okay therefore you may see that initially maybe when we take the average of the temperature the temperature for this element itself does not does not see any changes but then after after few uh, how should i say uh, time increment then it is being affected and so on so you will see that this when we set the time increment to be too small okay therefore what happens is that the effect of the the heat is not being transferred across the element okay and that results to what we call the effect or spurious uh, oscillations okay sometimes there is there is no heat then suddenly there is heated to 100 degrees celsius and so on Okay, so there is uh, this kind of uh, uh, yeah, un unwanted error okay, due to this setting. Okay? Therefore, uh, for a software like uh, Bacchus, they recommend uh, to a ratio of 1 over 6, okay, 6 times of thermal conductivity. Okay? Or maybe in other uh, software, they may take even higher 16. Okay? But it's up to you. you can, this is where you key in yourself. Okay? You control this, the parameter that you would want to supply to the software right so here are another type of uh, cheat transfer problem okay generally it still remain the same transient and steady state but in the transient then okay you may have what we call the the standard okay heat transfer okay the transient and steady state okay and then what happened is that when we would want to extend our applications to other other form okay let's say if you want to get a thermal stress okay thermal stress represent a stress or a changes of a, a structure due to the heat okay you may heat it up and then it will start to expand right okay so you know in that particular sense okay the software will have two ways to do it okay one way is we call it as sequential coupled thermal stress analysis. The second way is uh, we call it as fully coupled thermal stress analysis. Okay, the for the first way is that the software will run only heat transfer analysis. Okay, run from time zero until the end. Okay, maybe one hundred second. Okay, so zero to one hundred second, they will run uh, the analysis of heat transfer only. Okay, they run until the end, until 100 seconds, then stop, finish. Then only we put this temperature profile into the structural analysis. Okay, it can be yeah, structural analysis to obtain the stress. Okay, then we call this as a sequential coupled thermal stress. Okay, this is one way of doing it. Okay, another way of doing it is that we call it as a fully coupled thermal stress meaning to say in this way okay the software will now run in this way okay at time zero they run heat transfer after heat transfer they run the the structure or the stress analysis okay then at the next second okay maybe 0 0.1 second the next second they run the heat transfer again then they run the the stress or the displacement right because the stress is related to displacement so in this form of analysis your object will change shape right will change shape because uh, it may expand okay so when it expand then the next second you apply heat again okay it will further expand 
okay so this is how we call it as a fully coupled thermal analysis okay it depends on uh, suitability but normally this one will be much more faster okay than the other one right so these two terms is the terms being used in the software called abacus okay other commercial software like uh, ANSYS and other things they have similar methods but maybe the not naming is just a different okay it's just different naming all right but same uh, concept right so this is a, a method of uh, in the final element software where I've programmed it to activate the element accordingly okay to simulate uh, the additions of the elements okay or the 3d printing or maybe welding itself right so let's see if it's working okay okay so you can see that it is uh being uh, simulated okay one layer layer second layer okay and then the third layer right so you can see that the green at the bottom then pink and the blue right so we can actually program it okay to simulate this this kind of uh, situations right to simulate the heat transfer right so based on that particular methods okay i have compared uh, my methods as well with the commercial software course is well used for welding right so i've simulated it okay to the software as well as well as my proposed algorithm we compare the the size and so on and adjust the efficiency right so i've run the duck yeah i've run the thermal mechanical or the thermal stress analysis okay for different directions okay different directions okay and different interpass time okay to estimate what is the maximum temperature and then the stress occurs okay so you can see that when the interpass time okay time in between the first layer and the second layer is 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 small then the vertical displacement is lesser okay but then it get higher right and so on so you can we can see how it would uh, change right according to the the process parameter okay so this is the thermal stress okay inside okay when we claim this way how it looks like and so on okay so you can see that the thermal stress actually uh, increase when the interpass time increase okay so again any final element uh, analysis would not be uh, useful is if we only do simulations without validations okay therefore we also do experiments and compare it with the experiments okay and we found that it is uh, closely uh, match right so the matching is uh, for the experiments is maybe 0 0.2 millimeter okay for the displacement whereas in the simulations i we obtain is about uh 0.28 roughly okay so the difference is very small okay it's actually uh, less than the difference is less than 100 micron okay the difference is in less than 100 micron very small difference right in the x and y directions okay so that's all for today Okay, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask before we call these sessions to an end. Any questions? No, sir. Yeah. No, sir. Okay. So if no questions, uh, we will end these sessions. Uh, and we will not have class on this Thursday and next Monday I guess is public holiday right so we would we will arrange again in the set okay I will inform you when would be our next next yeah sessions right so this would be the end for these sessions okay and this week right so this week no more class okay until i will inform you right okay so that's all for today see you again bye bye stay safe
Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you, sir.